and welcome to another victory video from me Lauren from Lauren and the books I hope you're all having a wonderful week so far today is my April at the moment video this is a video during which I talk about what I'm up to at the moment so it might be the last film I watched the last TV program I watched the last book uh, the book I'm currently reading etc etc I just thought it's a good sort of like mid-month check-in um, to see what sort of media I'm taking in because otherwise I don't feel like I mention things on my channel unless they're my favourites and sometimes things you just watch or enjoy and they're not your favourites so I thought this would be a good way um, to do this. I go through uh, a series of, um, of, what do you call it? categories categories uh film tv book music podcast online and what have i been watching on youtube so i'll start with film now i'm filming this on sunday um i had my goddaughter molly around this morning um her mum had um, an appointment so she dropped her off to me quite early um and by 10 o'clock this morning i had watched princess and the frog uh princess and the frog is one of my favorite disney films if you're gonna ask me what my three favorite disney films are i'm gonna say princess and the frog moana and hercules um probably probably moana first and hercules second and then princess and the frog is up there really really love this um it was fun watching it with her she's not quite four yet um so you do a lot of explaining and she's like why is that man in charge of all those shadows and you're like why is that man in charge of all those shadows but really love the songs in this love the storyline it's sort of like it's the first um disney film I remember watching um, in terms of princesses where it's not all about the love story. There is still a love story there, so we haven't quite shifted the love story, um, but it's all about Tiana getting what she wants, which is to own and run her own restaurant, which is just wonderful. And like I said, songs are amazing, lovely. Loved it, loved it, enjoyed watching it, but yeah, <laughs> odd for me to have watched a film by 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Um, so yeah, that is the film that I've most recently watched. The TV show that I've most recently watched, and I haven't watched any TV since... Thursday night, no David was away Thursday night, since Wednesday um, and David and I are currently working our way through the box set of Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. This is the first season, sadly for me and David who both really really love this, it was never renewed for a second season. Um, what it is, is it's a, um, a TV show which follows the behind the scenes, um, the writers and the actors and the production team and the sort of television, um, the, the, the television bigwigs um, of a show called Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip which is a little bit like SNL on um, American TV, so like sketch show about things that are going on in the news at the moment. Um, it stars people such as Matthew Perry, um, I can't, oh Amanda Peet, um, oh my god what's her name, she's amazing, Sarah Paulson, um, and yeah really uh, really really enjoy it. So, like I really like the fact that it's got some really great women in it, like I think for this was, I think it was, I think it was like 2007. It looks a lot older than it is. I feel like anything past sort of like 2010 is like much, much older. Um, and yeah, I really, really loved it. Really enjoyed it. Really liked the season. I'm really rooting for a lot of the characters in here. Um, yeah, very, very underrated. Actually, David and I did a live show last night um, for me hitting 12,000 subscribers. Woohoo! Um, and somebody asked us what would be our, an underrated TV show um, that we love. And it's definitely this because it wasn't renewed for a second season and we really, really loved it. So yeah, definitely recommend and that give it a watch uh, the books that i'm currently reading three books on the go at the moment a Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne, very much enjoying this. Um, this is sort of me following my love story with John Boyne after reading uh, The Heart's Invisible Furies and absolutely loving it. This is uh, the second book of his I picked. Third book, because I keep forgetting, but he wrote The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas, which I've already read. Um, so this is the second adult book of his I picked up. Uh, you follow Morris Swift, who is a literary thief. He is working his way through his life and his career, stealing literary works of other people. And he's a right shit. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's told from different people's perspectives, so different people he's stolen from, and you find out more about them. Um, and I just, I just love it. I just love John Boyne's writing. I think he's absolutely amazing. I adore it. I adore it. I adore it. Um, I am also reading, and I'm very, very early days. I can barely even say anything about this because I'm on page 12, and I feel like I need to go back and reread it. Um, spring by Ali Smith because it's spring. Um, I love these seasonal quartet books, and I love to read them in the season that they are set when they first come out. So, um, yeah, this came out on Friday. I picked it up for cozy read. No, it didn't. It came out from the Friday before. Um, I picked it up for Cozy Reading Night. Um, and yeah, I really, the first chapter, I mean, she's quite experimental, isn't she, Ellie Smith? But the first chapter, the, the words look a bit like this. Some big fonts, some small fonts, some 
not really much grammar, uh, not much like punctuation and things going on there. Um, so yeah, I need to go back and re revisit that because I think I just sort of like wasn't taking it in properly when I was doing Cozy Reading Nights. That's the second book. Is that going to fit under there? And then the last, oh no, two more. Um, and then I'm reading and listening to the audiobook of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I don't need to tell you about that. And then I'm also listening to the audiobook of Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend, which was a book that I read and loved last year. David's reading it at the moment and I'm listening to the audiobook of it. And I've got to say, I feel like I loved the book. I loved reading the book, but the audiobook is just fantastic. The, per the, the narrator who does the voices, in fact, let me find out who it is because she is incredible. The voices she does are all amazing. Gemma Whelan, she's, it's just, it's just an absolute treat. I love the story and the book anyway, but it's an even bigger treat to be able to listen to it um, and have like all these voices and everything. So I'm loving that. I can't, in fact, looking forward to going back to work so that I can listen to it on my drive on the way home. That is the sign of a good audiobook. Um, music, what music have I been listening to recently? I can't give you a specific like song I've been listening to, but on Spotify, which is where I listen to my music, um, there is a series of playlists for Derry Girls. So Derry Girls is a TV programme that I love and the second series has just come back and I think it's amazing. It's set in the 90s in Northern Ireland and they have such amazing songs played um, during the show. It's, it's, a co it's a comedy show and it's just, I love it. I, I've gone on about it loads, I won't go on about it now, but Spotify have started making playlists um, for each of the characters in that show and some of their favourite songs. There's a lot of bewitched in there there's PJ and Duncan there's just amazing like 90s music um which is like like some pop some grunge and I've just been listening to those playlists and just having a wonderful time because there's no bad songs on those playlists <laughs> and they're the songs of like me I was born in 86 so the 90s for me was a big sort of like growing up I don't remember much about the 80s at all but the 90s were really fun like that's, that's when I that's when I was invented <laughs> invented that's when I invented myself I think um so yeah lots of lots of fun songs on there uh podcast uh the most recent podcast I listened to and I've literally just started listening to it is the late night women's hour podcast um I listen to women's hour I don't don't subscribe to the podcast because it gets out of hand in my podcast feed there's a there's a women's hour is an hour every day on radio 4 um and that show goes into a podcast which gets released every day and if you miss one or if you miss a week that's five bloody podcasts there's six in fact because they have an extra parenting podcast on a wednesday um so yeah i don't subscribe to that but i do listen in and if i see an episode that i really want to listen to i do download that but i do listen to subscribe to uh, late nights women hour late night women hour which is um sort of like as it says on the tin, a late night women's hour podcast um, where they talk about sort of maybe slightly harder hitting, um, harder hitting topics. Also, I, I guess they've, um, it's just a bit more uh, informal as opposed to, not that I would say that women's hour is particularly formal, but yeah, it's just, it's more of a chat than a sort of structured radio show. Um, quite often it's hosted by Lauren Laverne. The one I've just started listening to is about heart attacks and um, taking your child to work. And they normally pick two or three um, sort of um, uh, topics that they're going to chat about. And yeah, it's just really informative, um, really boosted. I don't listen to much news. So when I hear, when I, I, I listen to that, that's my sort of like news things that are going on in the world and stuff like that. Obviously I am aware of things that are going going on in the world but I don't listen to any specific news but very enjoyable if you like women's hour I think you'd really like that as well um and then the last two things what have I been doing online and what have I been watching on YouTube so online I've just bought now before before I tell you what I've just bought um this year I've been really really trying to cut down on my fast fashion spending uh last year like the amount I spend on clothes is just ridiculous and clothes that I would wear once and then never wear again and just stuff that I'd buy in the supermarket because I was in there and just thinking, oh, I won't bother buying a jumper, I'll buy a jumper when I get there. Like daft stuff like that. And after watching Stacey Dooley's um, documentary last year called um, The Price of Fashion, I think it's called, um, realising what a terrible effect that fashion was having on the environment that I literally had, it hadn't even crossed my mind. I've been really, really trying hard to buy secondhand clothes. I've got this secondhand blouse on today actually that I bought from Depop I've been showing it off on Instagram today it's really great um, it's not got any tags in it so I think it was actually made for someone um, but it was second hand I think it was £10 deliver delivered it's got all these silhouettes of women in different outfits and stuff absolutely love it so yeah I've been buying um, second hand clothes but what I did um, set myself the um, the sort of the rules of was that I was only allowed to buy one new item a month which although it still might sound like a lot to some people is basically like a it's, it's such a big I, I would buy like 
I would say about 10 new items of clothing every month. So to buy one new item of clothing, that's like a, is that a 90% increase? In decrease in what I'm buying which is amazing um so anyway so I bought one t-shirt this month uh, this year which was a charity t-shirt um for independent women uh, international women's day which says women power um and I'm going on holiday soon and I don't have a swimming costume that fits the swimming costume I wore when I went to center parks is too small for me it I bought it four years ago um I've never enjoyed shopping for swimming costumes because I don't feel like any of them fit me um and I bought this one in Tesco's four years ago and it's just too tight for me I really struggled to get it on I really struggled to get it off um whilst I I like the style of it I think it looks nice um it doesn't fit me so I um I thought I would buy myself a new swimming costume this week um and I the reason I decided to do this is my cousin Laura who I get a lot of my recommendations for she's very very good at things like that she um she recommended me a company called and I've forgotten the name of, I think it's Tamako let's have a look Batoko, Batoko and they are a company who make swimwear for all sizes like all sizes um, from recycled water bottles um, which is amazing so I ordered a swimming costume from this website I will link them down below if you're interested um, the one I've got coming has got uh, leaves and dinosaurs on and they've just got nice thick straps so my boobs aren't gonna be like hanging down low they're not cut super high because when I've tried on swimming costumes in the past they're either scooped back like completely scooped back and like everything's just gonna fall out like or really skinny straps which just aren't giving me any support or really cut high so like everything's falling out down there um, and I've got super duper high hopes for when this swimming costume arrives. So that is something, the most recent thing I guess I did online that wasn't like super uh, social media or anything. And uh, yeah, as I need you, oh, Minnie's trying to get out. Go on, Minnie, you can do it. She's so cute when she tries to open the door. Go on. She can do it. Um, so yeah, that's the most recent thing I did online. And then lastly, the most recent YouTube video I watched. <laughs> and weirdly, we've just been to David's parents for brunch. Um, we didn't see David's mum on Mother's Day um, because they were on holiday. So we've just had our sort of Mother's Day now. Um, and we had brunch. And she said, oh, did you watch Britain's Got Talent last night? Which is a programme like David and I do not watch. We don't really watch much like Saturday night telly at all, apart from Strictly, when Strictly's on. Um, and Britain's Got Talent, I'm sure there's like, there's this, th this sort of happens in all countries everywhere, but it's like a, a, a show where people audition with the talent and then um, the prize is, is that they, I think they get a, a monetary prize, but they also get to perform at the, at, um, the, I can't even think what it's called. The big, like, there's like a big show where they have like a, loads of different people on. The Royal Variety Show. Thank you, David. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and um, we don't watch this programme, but David's mum said, oh, did you watch the choir that were on there last night? And we were like, no, we don't watch it, we don't watch it. She said, oh, you must watch it, it was very good. And there was a choir, a small choir, uh, it looked, what started as a small choir and a, a chap who said, oh, he's, um, he's, he's trained these kids to sing and stuff. And they were singing Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Um, and it starts off with just five people on stage and just more and more people were added all the time and they've all got different outfits on and they're dressed as the judges and they're dressed as the hosts. And it just turns into complete chaos, but like organized chaos where it's really really fun and they're all having the time of their lives and just singing and having like they all just look so joyful and they're wheeling on people in wheelie bins and and just it's just wonderful <laughs> it was just so so joyful and I was crying I mean it don't really take much to make me cry David Williams one of the judges was absolutely crying his eyes out they get something called a golden buzzer which if they buzz it they get that person gets taken through to the final and David Williams buzzed that and it was just it was just wonderful it really reminded me of the Sainsbury's advert um from Christmas before when they, it was like a um, an activity but everything just goes like really high like mental so yeah loved it so that was what I most recently watched now I've got to go because my battery's my battery lights flashing um, but that's it for me so that's what I've been up to in April would love to hear what you've been watching reading listening to and I'll see you all again soon for another butcher video I've got to go really quick because my battery lights flashing bye